These tiny insects are more venomous than a cobra, but packed in that toxic sting is an even bigger secret. These ants push insect biology to the absolute limit, and in this case, they're using it to create rather than destroy. Welcome to Weird Planet. The dry grass rustles in the breeze as a tiny orange ant scouts the dusty ground. This habitat is crawling with highly venomous creatures, but it isn't the outback of Australia. We're smack dab in the middle of Arizona's Sonoran Desert, looking at a tiny ant with a seriously deadly secret. Streaming out of the depths below is a sea of orange. These almost scrawny looking angular orange ants speeding out of this nest with that pointed abdomen pointing up towards the sky. This is the iconic pose of the Maricopa harvester ant. Harvester ants get their name from their tendency to harvest the plants in their surrounding area. You'll see them carrying seeds and bits of leaves to their large, conspicuous mounds. Across the world, there are many groups of ants with a common name harvester ant. But what we're looking at today is a species in the genus Pagana Myrmex. The name means bearded ant and refers to the tufts of hairs these harvester ants have on their chins. They come in a wide variety of colors, dark red, black, even orange, and they're all highly venomous. But the Maricopa harvester ant is supreme among the Pagana Myrmex. These creatures might look like just ants, but they're actually one of the most impressive insects in the entire world. They have the most potent venom of not just any ant, and not just in the US or the Western Hemisphere. They have the most potent venom of any insect in the entire world, and it rivals some of the world's most venomous snakes. These guys are absolutely insane. So it probably sounds crazy that I'm telling you this tiny little insect is the most venomous in the world. So we should probably have a way to measure that, right? And it turns out we do. We rank the world's most venomous animals based on venom potency, not how many people they've killed. Mosquitoes kill hundreds of thousands of people a year, but they're not venomous at all. So they're the world's deadliest insect, but not the world's most venomous. Venom potency does sometimes correlate with more human kills, but not always. As far as we can tell, the Maricopa harvester ant hasn't killed a single human in history. But because we've measured their venom potency, we do know that they are still the world's most venomous insect. Venom potency is measured based on lethal doses, where the smaller the number, the more powerful the venom, because it takes less of that venom to kill you. And the Maricopa harvester ant comes in at 0.12, lower than any other measured insect in the entire world, which is one of the reasons why you might expect something like this to live in Australia. Australia has this reputation for having the most venomous creatures in the world because it actually kind of does. Australia is home to box jellyfish, stonefish, even venomous mammals that have incredibly powerful toxins. And Australia not only has the number one, but also the number two and many of the top 10 most venomous snakes in the world by weight. But it doesn't have the harvester ant. What is crazy is the venom of the harvester ant is so potent it can actually be compared to many of the most venomous snakes in the world. Its venom is technically 20 times the potency of a rattlesnake and on par with things like forest cobras and Australian tiger snakes, all of which can kill you very quickly. So this tiny little insect that hasn't killed anybody, what in the world does it need that powerful venom for? It turns out a lot of insects are venomous. Venom is found in at least five different insect orders. The Hymenoptera, which include these harvester ants, Hemiptera, the true bugs, Diptera, the flies, Neuroptera, the lacewings, and even Lepidoptera, the butterflies and moths. And most of these are using it to kill. This right here is a wheel bug, the largest assassin bug here in North America, and the largest terrestrial true bug as well. And these guys are no joke. You can recognize the wheel bugs, that really spiked, raised thorax here. It looks just like a Spinosaurus from Jurassic Park. They are really crazy looking, insane little insects, but they pack one heck of a punch. For the assassin bug, its venom is a weapon, and it has two major uses. First, to paralyze the food that it's eating. Assassin bugs are not fast. They get their name from how sneaky and stealthy they are. So their venom has to act quickly, making sure their prey cannot escape. But then it serves another purpose. The assassin bug's mouth parts are basically a straw, meaning it can't eat solid food. So their venom also acts as a digestive enzyme, dissolving their prey from the inside out 
so they can literally slurp it up like a milkshake. The truth is, we don't actually know that much about the toxicity of many insect venoms. Only some of the Hymenoptera have really been studied, so you could almost say the title of this video should be the world's most venomous insect that we know of. What's interesting is that we see a lot of variation among the Hymenoptera alone. The most painful stings usually aren't the most toxic, and they come from solitary parasitic wasps. Velvet ants and tarantula hawks seem to have invested all of their evolutionary points into pain and very little into actual toxicity. But on the other hand, many ants rival the world's most venomous snakes. The harvester ants, the Australian bull ants, and even fire ants have toxicity that compares with many elapid snakes. The bullet ants of Central and South America are more toxic than most of the vipers in the Western Hemisphere. This is a bit of a pattern, and patterns suggest something bigger is going on. How are ants using venom differently from other venomous insects, and why would that create pressure for them to be among the most toxic? of all insects. Insect venoms are really in two different categories. One of them is for killing other insects as prey. The other is for defending themselves against larger vertebrate predators. The assassin bug's bite is painful, but nobody's dying to assassin bug bites. Meanwhile, there are stinging caterpillars in South America that regularly cause human fatalities. So there definitely are insects that need to be well defended against much larger animals. The venoms that we see that aren't super toxic are usually for just killing or paralyzing insects long enough for things like wasps to lay eggs on them. They might be painful stings to humans, but they're really not life-threatening unless you happen to be allergic. Even many other arthropods that eat insects are venomous. Most spiders and just about every scorpion we know of use venom to subdue their prey. And since they're mostly eating insects, it's a pretty safe assumption that if your main food is insects, it probably pays to be venomous. But the thing is, a lot of ants aren't just eating other insects. Because they're collecting these huge food stores deep underground, there are a lot of animals that would love to take advantage of that. So they not only have to be toxic to insects, they have to be toxic enough to defend against would-be invaders. Invaders that may be many thousands of times their size. These harvester ants have an even deeper challenge. They don't just need to defend their food stores from greedy rodents. They have to keep their stockpiles safe because food isn't guaranteed in the desert. This habitat is so challenging because it's bone dry for most of the year. Resources become scarce, and the animals that weren't prepared join the scattered bones that decorate the rocky sands. Every single calorie counts, and the survival of the colony depends on the security of their food stores. This created what we call an evolutionary arms race, where two animals evolve together over generations, and they sort of amplify each other's adaptations. These harvester ants have tons of seeds and leaves and things in their food stores, which happen to be the favorite foods of mice. And mice raid harvester ant nests all the time. Turns out, if some of these mice have a little bit more of an innate immunity to the harvester ant's venom, they're able to steal more resources more frequently without any issues, and that means they're better equipped to survive in these desert environments. All they have to do is steal from the harvester ants. Because these venom-immune mice are better able to get resources, they're able to reproduce more. Which means over time, this venom immunity becomes more prevalent in the mouse population. And as a whole, the population becomes more immune to the venom. This in turn puts pressure on the ants. The ants that have more toxic venom are better able to repel or even kill rodent invaders, which means they're able to keep their resources for themselves. This means the ant colonies with higher toxicity of venom are able to reproduce more quickly and spread faster than the environment, and over time, the ant population becomes more venomous. In cases like these, you kind of have this back and forth, where the mice get more and more tolerant to the venom, which pushes the ants to become more and more toxic, until you reach a breaking point where one of them adapts so well that the other can no longer compete. And that seems to be what happened with the harvester ant. And that incredible back and forth over hundreds of thousands, possibly even millions of years, crowned the Maricopa harvester ant the most venomous insect in the world. Now, of course, how can I talk about the most venomous insect in the world if I'm not going to actually test it? This is actually one I've really been curious about for years. So I'm actually going to go ahead and get a worker here. I've always been curious what the power of the world's most venomous insect actually would be. You probably think I'm crazy. I'm going flesh to stinger with the world's most venomous insect. But in just a second, you're going to see exactly why. Oh, there it is. Oh, that's really... I felt that. Oh, its stinger came out. What? Like a bee. 
What was crazy about the Maricopa harvester ant sting was it didn't feel like a sting, like a wasp or something where you can feel like a single point. It was like the entire area immediately got inflamed, like I'd been impacted by something. So that's actually really intense. I, I, I think that was a full tank. It felt like a bruise initially, and now it's like sharp and radiating out in both directions. It wasn't like a dramatically painful experience, but it was impressive for such a tiny little ant. Now I can't find a ton of resources on the mechanism of Maricopa harvester ant venom, but from what we do know about it, I would have to assume it's neurotoxic and probably behaves similar to the venom of like a black widow. I feel it in my armpit now. Yeah. Really aching, yeah. I can't imagine it'll be terrible, but wow, it's like, I feel it like right here, like a, it feels like a bruise. Like it has the, mm -hmm. the bruise quality to it. Despite the potency of their venom, one sting really isn't that bad. It's impressive for how tiny the insect is, but it's really not a horrifically painful experience. You're not gonna be screaming and crying on the ground, but you're definitely gonna know that something nailed you. For a human my size, it would take over 600 stings to kill me, which sounds like a lot until you look at how many ants there are in a colony. If you were to be swarmed by a Maricopa harvester ant colony, you could be in serious trouble. But the craziest part is, like I said earlier, as far as we know, no one's ever died to the Maricopa harvester ant. And a lot of that has to do with where they're found. They're not like the Mermesia bull ants from Australia or fire ants, which are both highly venomous and highly defensive of their nests and turn up in your backyard. Maricopa harvester ants are not all that defensive against big vertebrates. You really got to give them a reason to sting you. And they tend to only lurk in remote natural areas. These guys don't like to be around human development. You gotta kind of work to find a harvester ant colony. And I've worked with not just this species, but several other species across the Southern United States, and all of them are extremely reluctant to sting in the first place. In order for you to get enough stings to actually cause real problems, you probably have to do something really stupid. These ants are powerfully venomous, but they're really not coming across people all that often at all. And these ants have a very special relationship with the remote habitats they call home, too. What if I told you that the world's most venomous insect actually keeps the desert alive? These harvester ants dig their nests deep into the dry ground, which helps them stay away from the hot, dry surface, but it also means the subterranean world of the desert receives an important service. As these ants excavate their caverns, they're actually helping to aerate and cycle the layers of soil, which in turn helps keep the surrounding plant life healthy. Bringing the seeds from the dry surface to the cooler, damper underground also allows for better cycling of nutrients. On the scorching surface, this plant matter would take forever to dissolve back into the environment, but underground, where microbes can thrive, nutrients can cycle back to the earth to be used by the Sonoran Desert's diverse flora. On the surface, we see the bright warning colors that advertise their toxic sting. We hear world's most venomous insect, and our instinct is to kill these creatures on sight. But they maintain a delicate balance in some of America's driest environments, and in general, don't have any interest in conflict with people. The Maricopa harvester ant hides a very potent, venomous secret, but that venom in the nest it defends are key secrets that have allowed the Sonoran Desert to become the most biodiverse in the world. It's incredibly toxic, sure, but it serves a vital purpose in keeping our planet perfectly weird. I do find it funny how extreme habitats like this push animals to such powerful venoms. And it's not just insects that this happens to. On the other side of the planet, the desolate moon plains of Australia have given rise to another toxic creature, the most venomous snake on Earth. If you'd like to learn about the secretive inland taipan and embark on an adventure into the land down under, check out this video right here. Hope to see you there, but until next time, don't forget to get outside and find your own adventure.